T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. Lift off. Shake it back! Does that feel good? Yeah! Welcome, Shake and Bakers, to episode 326 of the Shake and Bake Show with always prepared Courtney Enderside. Always, Come on, man. Always working overtime, weed locking the world, Wow, the fajita slapping champion, Marnette, and mm. Stevie hook sliding in the last second because he's been at work for 80 hours straight. For the last year, guys, glad you uh, guys are with us tonight. Sorry we missed you last week. We were having all sorts of technical difficulties. I was across the world with little to no service. I was having to do the gapping. Uh, Lyle was bead locking. Courtney was probably. I was helping NC Promoter with his new business model. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's we funny have, out the gate. We have so much to talk about because it's been a couple of weeks since we had a show. And it's been a lot of excitement that's happened in racing, door car racing, funny car racing, fuel car racing, pro stocking. World Series of Pro Modding we haven't talked since. Yes, a lot of that. So before we get going, what have you co-hosts been up to the last little while? Well, uh, race cars. Uh, really? You ain't been doing shit. You're, You're right. No I don't go anywhere. I know. Um, I have been beat locking the world continuing my quest to do so uh i currently well now i have like my own big boy adult yard to keep up uh, like when we bought this new house we got some acreage with it several of it is a yard and uh i've never had this responsibility on my own so i've been youtubing uh my grandpa left me a yard aerator out there that he had to have some fab work done to make it hook up to the back of my shit so i could pull it around so like literally 10 minutes before i jetted down here to the basement to come on i was me and nash were riding around the side by side air eight in the yard uh is it the time of the year to do that sure i, I think it is and i went and spent 200 dollars at the seed store yesterday and got some stuff that some youtuber told me to get so i'm uh you are exactly the demographic they're after <laughs> good well they win <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, having a yard that's is hard. Honestly, that's what I did on my weekend off. The last weekend off was just took care of shit around the house. It's like, you get it. It's a lot. I live here alone. I don't have anybody to do anything. I come back and it's like, everything's grown. All of the sudden, like spring has sprung and all the shit is going on. So I had to husband it up for myself the last few weeks. Huh. Huh. <laughs> Let's just. I didn't say anything. I was just thinking about you taking care of your yard and stuff. I do. I take care of my damn self. Okay. Today's trash day. I got to take out my own trash. I would love to not take out my own trash. My sister's calling me like she doesn't know what we do Tuesday nights. Answer, ask, her, on? ask her. Ask her if I can get a pair of them shoes. Erica, you're on speakerphone on the Shake and Bake show. <laughs> so do not say anything that you hi. do not want. Say hi. Hey, how do I get a pair of them swanky driving shoes? What? Oh, thank you. That's the only custom Italian shoes I'm getting. Yeah, right. Uh, so I get a pair of swanky, swanky. Yeah, Stevie, I might be a little bit of a designer shoe person. Stevie wants to know how he gets some. Yeah, I like them for you, but I need some too. Uh, Billy Deacons at Sparco, and you should be wearing Sparco anyway. Well, gosh damn, here uh, gosh, I want to get a plug. Uh, I only with the automatic, I only need like one good one, and then the other one could just be whatever. Just you could put y'all's shake and bake logo on the side of your shoes. They'll put anything you want on there. Oh, shit. And bake. Bake on one side, bake on the other. Yes. All right. We're guys, available soon on CFAS.com. Anyway, um, I just wanted to answer this because we're shaking bacon and oh, we're going to call Mike. Mike. Yeah, well, I'm sorry. I forgot to call you back earlier. Yeah, I know. It's okay. Yeah. Uh, no, busy, busy bee. All right. Well, <laughs> oh, yeah. Love you. Love you. Yeah. Love we're going to. Hey, I'm turn it on. I forgot. Okay. Y yeah. Yeah. Turn it on. Love you. Bye. Speaking of safety debacles, we had a, uh, I'm just going to, in order for anonymity, we're going to just leave. We're going to change the names of this story. Okay. Ooh, I love this. So Jeffrey Barker, 
<laughs> sent his helmet in to get worked on today. You didn't change that name. No. To a company who's supposed to work on helmets. And he sent them a complete helmet. Like that, ready, like ready to put on your head. Right. For an adjustment. He got back a box of parts <laughs> and some bolts and fittings. He's going to be mad at me telling the story. He calls him and he said, I gave him a very Stevieism response. I just asked him, who is in control of the QC department at this company? Anyways, they, they're going to fix it. That was my funny safety stories. So. Well, what I mean, I don't, what was their reasoning? Uh, they said they've been recently acquired by private equity and they don't have anyone uh, available that actually can work on anything. We have, hmm. we have now not protected the names of the innocent. <laughs> um, I didn't say anything. So. <laughs> All the way to the scene of the crash. Um, well, anyway. Katie, what, have, what have you been doing besides flying uh, across continents and, and doing shit like that? So yesterday marked the 36th day in a row that I was at a drag strip. 36. I didn't get that. Could you try again? <laughs> 36 days at the drag strip. Yeah, that's... That's a little much, to be honest. TX2 so, was here, and serious, I said no. Series like what? So uh, I've been on the road for six weeks, uh, hence part of the reason that the show got shanked last week. Um, we have raced the last time. The last night's the first time I slept in my bed since February 3rd or something. So I've been racing and racing and testing and racing customer cars. Um, Shadow come out, kicked ass and radial. Took it to World Series of Pro Mod. We'll get that a little bit later. Uh, customer cars kicking ass. We're doing good. I've been working. KTR is growing and it is killing me. I actually talked to Eric Dillard today. He gave me some good advice and told me a while back, be careful what you wish for. And I had to call him and tell him you're right. It's a lot of work. Yeah. I think that's with a lot of things, yeah. uh, but well, I think well, listen, <laughs> and I feel like, and y'all shake and bakers. Cause you always let us know what you think. I know we got a little bit of hate mail of not having the show last week, which is a good thing, but wouldn't you rather let us know? Wouldn't you rather us all be together? I feel yeah, like that's they the call that we last made. Week, they were going to be without me. Yeah, and I, I can't stay late tonight. Uh, the shadow still is not ready to race, and is supposed to like be in Alabama tomorrow. <laughs> so I've got I'll be on for with you guys for a little while. I can't stay late tonight, but I agree. I would rather when we appreciate you guys' patience when stuff like that happens when there's a delay or postponement. You got to realize that I race cars for a living. And these two folks are in the racing industry for a living. And uh, it's our, our schedule can be difficult. Podcast schedules are hard anyway. What? I said, and I have an almost two-year-old. I have yes. a dog. Who I am. A, I have, was a menace. I have the mental capacity of a two-year-old. Uh, I seen your youngin running around the airport. He is fearless. He had yes. both parental guidance figures chasing him yes. and is fearless. Yeah, Nash is. Oh, I'm a uh, parental advisory before he puts it up. I am fucked. Yeah, oh, so yeah, fucked. he's you. Yeah, I know. He's so and damn I'm getting, cute, though, and he's so smart. He'll walk into the pit and just start snatching on the steering wheel and beating on the car, and it's awesome. He's ready to roll. Oh, yeah, yeah. We were fist yeah, bumping. He, he gave me a little kiss. Oh, he's such a flirt. If you've got, if you have a bag of dumb, dumb suckers, <laughs> Nash D is in it. Whatever He's you have. to work at Motion Race Works. Amen. Needs to own it. Man, we got a lot of good comments. Uh, I have not been back in the Honky Rocket after the inversion, uh, but I may go fly it tomorrow because no, I that. need to get to Alabama and I don't really have time to drive. So I may, I may go just try uh, to out. I saw somebody ask about beer money. So Carolina Cash Days at Shady Side Dragway, Corey Stamper's race with the Buff Boys was this past weekend. I've won like four out of the last five of those, but I had like Stevie, I'd been on the road for three weeks straight uh, racing. I'd been in a race car for like most of that time we were testing in between races and whatnot. And when I got home, I just, I was raced out. I'll be honest. So I did not go this past weekend. I stayed home and hung out with Nash D and we went and rode around and, and had fun. But I'm, I'm thinking I may take it to Mooresville, uh, I don't know about this weekend, but possibly this weekend. They've got a little small tire race there. But as far as coming back to Shady Side, I don't know, probably in the fall, man, at the, the fall edition of the Carolina Cash Days. 
Listen, sometimes that happens. Sometimes you get raced out. Someday, if I hear an announcer or a burnout, I'm going to lose my shit and I just need like three days away from it. Stevie, I don't know how you're not there right now. I'm there. Like, I love, and people will give a shit for this. Like, oh, you get to race for a living, all the things, but like, everything's a job no matter what you do. Well, just think, Stevie just came from a track where the burnouts were the only thing he understood. Everything else was no comprende. <laughs> I listened to some of the runs from there. Just, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe, I go to World Cup finals. Yeah. So I'm working on my Portuguese. I can say some words. I can say, bom dia. That's good morning. Cafe por favor. Says, can I please have some coffee? Because I'm in a track. Uh, obrigado. Obrigado. Thank you. So I'm working on it. I can say all the cuss words. But I'm not going to say that now. So I'm working on it. But I landed from Brazil at 1 a.m. last night. And I'm in the shop at 5.30. <laughs> so, like, I'm with it, baby. Get you some of that. But it's going to be good. I'm there. Uh, as I said, KTR is growing and we're wide open. And uh, it's an exciting time. I'll look back on this in five years. It will have either killed me or I will be successful. And we will reference this 18 months of my life. It's the harvest. You got to plant the seed and do the fucking work. See how hard you can get hit over the head with a hammer before you either quit or learn how to take it. This whole industry is just repetitively getting hit over the head by a hammer. Yeah. It was hot in Brazil. Uh, so normally this time of year, it's just ending the summer and it's, it's pretty temperate. Uh, I think we had the record high. <laughs> um, while we were there, it was 93, 94 degrees, 6,000 foot of DA, 130, 40 grains. Track was 150. Uh, it's pretty oh, good. my God. Oh, yeah. Matt, we got any footage since we're on the Brazil race? We got any footage of any of that? We went low ET of the event. We qualified number one by nine hundredths. We went low ET of every round that we staged the car, and we won the race. Nine so hundredths? Yeah, I put that big. That would be a, that'd get a rule change over here. Here's Matt. What we got, Matt? All right, we got two clips. Ready? Yeah, show the one without the red car first, and then with the red car second. Well, shit, I can't tell which one's which. Just pick one. You got 50 50. All right. Para o Grêmio é trancado do Inicial Fim 3, 738 Let me, I'll go ahead and translate that for you. What he said is Stevie just put in the big winner. All right, let's show the finals. This is a good run. This is a good-looking run. Sydney did an awesome job driving this race. Race car driver, driver Sydney Frigo was clocked in. Uh, that man didn't make a single mistake and drove the wheels off that car. Uh, we ran good. That translates is they did it again. Uh, all I heard was Frigo. Yep. Yeah. So. That's what I'll say. It's like, right. <laughs> 373 and 5,800 feet of air is ski daddling. So we got big power. KTR was motor. A, good. Was there a massive party after oh, yes. y'all won? Oh, yes. There's a massive party in Brazil, whether you win or not. <laughs> like, the fun part of it is there. Uh, very social culture. What Great do you drink there? What, what do you drink uh, when you're there? Yeah, a lot. Anakin? Just whatever. Uh, any beer you want, as long as it's a Heineken. Uh, Caprinas, Caprianas, Caprinas. Uh, drink a little bourbon. Um, I bet the coffee's good. Coffee's good, huh? Oh, yeah, Brazilian coffee. Uh, it, it's like our coffee on steroids. So, like, when you drink coffee, you drink a small cup of coffee. Like you don't drink like a cup of coffee, you'll die. You're like you, you, it's strong. Oh, okay. So you're like you drink a, you know, most meals will have an espresso, and uh, it's very good. I like it down there. I'm becoming native. I'll be speaking Portuguese pretty soon. Great. When you start speaking it that way, it's funny. Like at World Cup two, the announcers they get more high pitched and they elongate all their words. Are you gonna start doing that too? Yeah. Okay. I mean, like, you got gappled. I just put an O at the end of everything. So everything I say, I act like I can speak it. So I'll be like, can I have a bureau? Well, have yeah, here in Texas, you put an L before it and an O after, like, like you know, L microphono. Microphone. Yeah, yeah that's kind of what I do, but I can kind of <laughs> figure it out. We are special and offensive in all cultures. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, um, anyways, that's what I've been doing. I've been kicking ass in Brazil. Uh, Y'all want to have a guest on or you want to go to World Series Promo? Is he there yet? Yes. 
He is. Should we? Well, cover? I feel like I feel like let's bring him on and then we can hit World Series after. Because okay. we what you want to have five minutes of World Series promo? Uh, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. And I am super excited about this guest. Uh, been a fan of his for a long time. It's a driving son of a gun. That's a driving son bitch. That's <laughs> a driving son bitch. And he's so fun. So and he's fun. fun. And he told me he wants to let me drive his funny car next week. Let's bring on the Proc Rocket. The Proc Rocket, baby. What? What's going on, guys? What's up, man? I'm going to go first. Austin, it's so nice of you to have that little private test session check behind you. You like the check that? we gave you at the private test session. What oh. a great check. Man, it's, it's it is so nice big. It's so big, I don't know what to do with it. I tried taking it to the bank. They wouldn't accept it. I'll tell you what I'd do with it. I'd carry that son of a bitch on around on my shoulder every fucking where I went. To the gym? Yeah, I, yep. I'd be I'd be pushing the shopping cart to get some milk. They'd be like, what's that? Oh, it's just my check. Yeah, yeah. I, need a big, I need a bigger house to like put this thing somewhere. Well, now you can buy one. Yeah. That's yeah. Fair. You have For one. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> In that's California, you don't have one, but in the South, that's a decent little house there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, me. that's more, that's worth more than my house when I bought it. <laughs> Fair. Yeah. No, that's I think, I think he might most. win for, like, coolest background of a guest we've had so far. Oh, that's a pretty absolutely. sweet setup. Pretty hard yeah, to pick that background. They don't just give that away. Yeah. No, uh, you, earned, of, you earned that, that one. That's my uh, proc memory wall behind me. In front of me, I got my grandpa's memory wall. Just a That's whole a bunch of hodgepodge cool. photos. I love it. Well, oh, see, he's got a cocktail. Cheers. This is what we do yes. on the show. Yes. Okay. Cheers. Yeah. I, Cheers. I thought that was the thing on this show. So. I oh, it is. Oh, it is. It is. This is. This We've is got the parental advisory notice. Yep. We usually have a drink counter, a wino meter, and a beer counter for Lyle over there. So you'll fit right in there, darling. And a wiener meter. And a oh, wiener yeah, meter. A wiener meter. We'll break him in. We'll break him. He's new, guys. He's new. Oh yeah, but. So, We've all seen these storybook beginnings that have happened sporadically. Sometimes it's a long time before you see one. I've been part of it. I have watched other people do it. Like, you can't really enter no better than that. You can't dip your toe into the pond no better than that. Yeah, no, uh, you're definitely right. I mean, if we would have, you know, we obviously started out stout in Bradenton uh, when it counted. We didn't start when we didn't start out stout when we dropped the door, but, uh, the boys got it together and uh, definitely threw me to the wolves and uh, obviously got the job done. And then we roll into Gainesville and we're like, man, was this just storybook luck? And the car picked up right where it was left off and uh, thing was flying. And if we would have won the final round there, we would have been damn straight perfect for two weekends in a row. And that, that stuff's just hard to come by. And it was JR's day. So uh, still an outstanding start to the year. Uh, got a long ways to go. Can't get ahead of ourselves, but we definitely got to celebrate what we've been doing. Fuck, I, I'd I have the, bar. the before they get technical. I have the most important question here. When you realized you were switching to Funny Car, was one of the first things you thought of was like, where am I going to stand now on the top of this car? How am I going to get out and celebrate differently? Because you had you had a lock with the dragster. Yeah, no, uh, a lot of people, when when the public found out about it or, or personal friends are like, what are you going to do now? And I'm like, just joking around. I'm like, well, I'm going to have to do a backflip to like, you know, keep up with standing on top of a 10 foot. Yeah, because everybody know? stands but, on top of it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I get to the highest point I can and uh, uh, I give her a good hoorah up there. You got to get the Formula One, you know, the, the strong arm. <laughs> you got to get that going. He even knows about uh, that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I, I have no business doing a backflip. I'm not that agile. I can touch my toes and that's about it. I'll tell you, at, at Pro Superstar Shootout, I was up there. Obviously, I attacked you. I had no business being in your personal space and I came and attacked you when you won. But I was watching you and it was so funny because I knew that was probably the first time you'd like really gotten up there when your adrenaline's pumping and I watched you and you were quite careful. You were quite careful. I, I, well, that Camaro's plenty round up there. You know, your your ankles are doing stuff it shouldn't do. You know, you're on like this kind of, on that kind of joint. And uh, yeah, I was I was a little careful. I, the last thing you want to do is fall. You know what I'm saying? How I got I got I got a, yeah I got a nice painted helmet. I don't want to scuff that thing up. For two hundred fifty thousand, we can buy another one, bud. Yeah. Backflip off that <laughs> son of a bitch. True story. <clears throat> if I know racers, that shit's long gone. But. Before Nitro became a thing for you, Austin, you had a you have you've had a history in in sprint car and dirt track stuff, right? 
Yes. So when when did all that start? What where did that where did the transition happen and where did your dirt track background kind of begin and end? Um, so I, I actually started racing when I was 10 years old, uh, started in a quarter midget. So my great grandfather was a circle track racer. Uh, he raced midgets back in the thirties and forties. And then, um, he was also a ride on mechanic in, uh, Indy cars. So he actually finished 10th in the Indy 500 in 1941, I believe as a ride on mechanic yeah. and gr growing up, I just thought that was so cool that he was different than the rest of my family. You know, my grandfather raced, my dad raced, uh, my uncle raced all drag racing. And I thought that it was neat that he did something else. And that's kind of what I wanted to do. Um, and ran from, I was 10 years old all the way until I was, uh, I think 20 and just worked up through the ranks, got to race under Tony Stewart's wing, uh, raced out of his race shop. You know, we had our own equipment, but we worked out of his building and, uh, definitely wouldn't be in the position I am today without Tony Stewart for sure. So did a lot for us. And, uh, won a championship in 2014 in a pavement midget. And then that series kind of crashed and we were forced to go dirt racing and, uh, tried my hand at dirt, got a couple wins, uh, definitely not as successful as I was on pavement, but, uh, me and my brother, we were both kind of learning together. That was the last time me and my brother raced together up until this point. And he was learning how to tune a dirt car and I was learning how to drive one. And, uh, there was definitely some frustrating moments, a lot of torn up cars, a uh, lot of tipping over, being too tight, and uh, but happy to be back racing, racing with them again. That's awesome. I think that's one of the coolest things that, that about your story and how it's kind of winding up now. Not that you're winding up, you're young, but you've been racing for so long. You've done so many different things. You, I go to dirt races or I go to you know the flow stuff, and they're like, "Oh, Proc, we know Proc," and they don't know a lot of drag racers. And I think that's cool, but. It's almost like you're starting this new poetic chapter. When we get older, we get yeah. more sentimental, right? And like that had to have been super, super cool. Obviously winning is amazing, but your dad and your brother in Bradenton, like, I mean, did y'all just lose your shit? Yeah. I mean, to do it, it's one thing to race, you know, and I, I've been lucky enough to race close to my family, you know, in a sense under the same roof since I started drag racing and, but to do it as a team, I mean, there's, there's nothing better than it. Like, uh, you know, we, we haven't had any bad days really yet, you know, other than, uh, testing early on. Uh, but man, it's so much fun. We share the same passion, you know, uh, my dad bred us to be racers and, and now we're, now we're getting to, you know, race on a professional level with him. It's uh pretty surreal. It, I, it still hasn't hit me yet. You know, it's, it's been so, so cool. So smooth. The thing's been flying and, uh, life's just been good, but like I said earlier, we got a long ways to go and we just got to keep that mentality, keep that drive. And, uh, I think if you have that drive and that passion and, and you manifest things, uh, you'll be unstoppable. Yeah. I've been a fan of your dad's for a long, long time. And, uh, we were talking the other day about th this was actually before Gainesville with a group of folks. We have a pool of who we pick, you know, championship every year before season starts. Yeah. And, you know, I you know, I told the story about watching your dad take Robert up there for the last round of qualifying in Pomona, racing for the championship, not in the show, and go low ET of the event in Q4. And I'm like, that is a man after my own heart. That is a yeah. set of nuts. And, like, I like that. And he's one of the guys that he tunes the car for the track right now, and it doesn't matter what happened before, and it doesn't want to happen yeah. tomorrow. It's the what the track has right now, and I like that. I try to emulate that, yeah. but I have, I have driven alcohol dragsters and alcohol funny cars and I drove the dragster first and then I drove the funny car. I haven't got to drive a nitro car yet, but for me, I have some sort of insight. Tell the folks watching what the difference is between sitting <laughs> where you sit in a, in a, in a dragster versus how you have to drive the funny car. Well, the, the dragster is quick. Like there ain't no lying about that. You know, when you go, when you go eight, 10, 60 foot, which I got to experience a few times, uh, you, your brain can't even keep up. You don't even know where you're at until you land past the three thirty. Uh, but the dragster, it's so much longer. It's a little bit more elegant and lazy, you know, you kind of point and shoot in that. And by the time it all settles in, you might have to, you know, finesse the wheel a little bit without a cocktail in your hand or you do it one handed, um, uh, 
Ooh. Yeah, but yeah, you can just kind of finesse it, and because if you yank the wheel in the dragster, it gets real snappy real quick because it you got a long pendulum swinging. So you got to be real finesse on the wheel. Where the funny car, um, obviously, you got the engine in front of you, which is badass. You know, there ain't nothing cooler than seeing that five hundred cubic inch engine in front of you. But Shit. when when you stand on the gas, um, when it leaves the thing is very, very twitchy to the steering wheel to about the 330. So you got to let it kind of do its deal and be very, very finesse on the wheel. Because if you, that's when you're getting all your ET is early. Yeah. You know, you're, you 60 foot good, you're going to run good to the back half of your powers there. So you got to be very finesse on the wheel. And then once the arrow kind of comes in and it drops the nose, like you'll watch the funny cars in slow-mo, the 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 splitter will be up in the air and then right about the 330 cone it'll start to drop down and it'll seal off well when it does that i almost think it overloads our our uh front a arms and they deflect and down track you really gotta put some input into it but the thing i'm learning right now i don't have enough runs yet how much wheel and how quick do i need to stab that steering wheel to get it to react because you don't want to get out there and you know, yank on the wheel and then it snaps the rear end around and now all of a sudden you're crossing the center line crashing into someone. So it's just, you got to be a lot more aggressive on the wheel down track. I just haven't quite sorted that out. I float around the groove a little bit right now. Um, like I told, like I told my dad at the end of the weekend in Gainesville, I'd, I'd grade myself a 70% as a driver right now, uh, driving that thing. I feel like I have a long ways to go to make Robert height runs. Um, but I also only have, uh, you know, 15 runs in it probably and every one of them's the slowest i've gone is 91 which is uh pretty crazy for a rookie <laughs> yeah that's pretty serious that's pretty serious. but yeah. so backtracking just a touch how does austin proc go from aspiring professional dirt track racer to all of a sudden uh your your top fuel dragster racer for jfr and now obviously you have taken Robert Height's place in the funny cartoon by your dad, worked on by your brother, which is a totally cool story. Um, but how did the transition happen? When did it happen? Why did it happen? So uh, 2017, uh, beginning of 2017, I believe it was, uh, just got back from Australia. I was racing a uh, midget and wing sprint car over there for uh, Gary Rook and his family. And uh, we got back ran a few races in the sprint car or midget, I believe, and uh, ended up wadding the thing up and we sold everything, uh, got rid of it. You know, the midget class kind of got a little hairy on uh, the racers and racer etiquette. And we wanted to go wing sprint car racing. So we acquired a wing sprint car set up from uh, TSR, had it all ready to go, you know, looking for a little funding here and there, ready to rip, had everything we needed. And uh, John Force called me and was like, hey, uh, we're looking into the future here and we want some young talent and we believe you're what it needs to be. And, uh, he said, it ain't going to be right off the bat, but he said, you can come here, you can work on the race cars. We'll start training you, get into, you know, start stepping you up the ladder. And, uh, when force calls you an offer or gives you an opportunity to do something like that, I mean, you'd be stupid to say no. So, uh, obviously I took it. I went and worked on Courtney Force's funny car as a uh, floater. I called myself professional team entertainment and uh, rag folder. Uh, that was pretty much my duties. But uh, in between in between races, Force was sending me to Frank Hawley's. I went to uh, super comp classes, super gas, ran up the ranks, ran an alcohol funny car, ran an A-Fuel dragster. And then in 2018, he threw me in the funny car in the spring test at Vegas and Man, I was hooked. I fell in love with a funny car uh, that day. And I remember that moment, you know, to a T right now. And uh, 2019, I was racing professionally in top fuel, which wasn't the plan. That was another scramble. Uh, we, we figured out about halfway through the off season between 2018 and 19 that we were switching from a funny car to a dragster after I started putting these funny cars together at the shop. And uh, he, he calls and says, you know what? We want two dragsters. And uh, we had two crew chiefs and a driver, and we had about three months to get it all ready. Had no funding. We were just building it just in hopes of going. 
And uh, I think it was the last day of the Phoenix test force called and said, Hey, we got a sponsorship. You got to figure out how to get this here. And we were calling everybody and their brother uh, showed up there the day after the Phoenix test ended, dropped the door the, the guys drove all through the night. They got there at about four 30 or five o'clock. My dad told them they got there and we were assuming we were going to set up and hit the track in the morning. And uh, I went and told my dad that, and he goes, no, you're not. He said, we got to make a pull right now. And they dropped the door. We had crew chiefs bolting on cylinder heads because we had no team. There was only three of us. Um, <laughs> made, a stab, made a stab at on the gas that night. It was pitch black out. The Phoenix racetrack wouldn't turn the lights on. I could barely see the guy backing me up. And I stood on the gas, and it had about 18-foot header flames straight in the tire Just smoke. Just send it. Had a, had a clutch malfunction. If, if we wouldn't have mid, made that run, I wouldn't have been licensed in a top fuel car. And we would have went to Pomona and Force was going to pull his spare car out. And I was going to race funny car that year. So, uh, wow. yeah, never made Holy a run to the, geez. never made a run to the finish line. I made, we tested for one day. I think I made four runs just enough to get my license ran about 250 mile an hour and, uh, left there on Tuesday, showed up to the track on Wednesday in Pomona. They wrapped the trailers, wrapped the race cars, went up there Q1 and run 78, and we were second low. Austin! Hey, and all you fans say you want to race cars for a living. Yeah. Holy, I, think it's, I, I think had it's, no idea. Me neither. Wow. They literally have thrown me to the wolves. Well, and <laughs> I was just going to say, I think it's crazy because I didn't know that part about your story, but the parts that I have learned from doing all these interviews that I've been so blessed to do with you here lately, leading up uh -huh. to the first <laughs> but even the way that your funny car debut of this came out. So like fate is just crazy. Thought you were going this way. It's yep. pointed you that way. I know that whenever the top fuel deal kind of came unraveled during the off season last year, I know it was kind of grim for a second, not really knowing what was going to happen. Um, not knowing if you were going to race even at pro what the deal was, but then same kind of deal. Like the opportunity is better on the other side of that stuff. But you're, I had no idea that your career even started like that. That's fucking wild. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been definitely a roller coaster. Every year uh, definitely surprises me some for the good, some for the bad, but uh, you know, even this year, like getting thrown into the funny car, we couldn't go past the Christmas tree. And uh, when it was crunch time, we had one more run in the test session to uh, make a full pole and the thing ran 384, 337, which was the fastest mile an hour I've gone in any race car, even quicker than the, or faster than the dragster. And we ended up uh, low ET at testing. So yeah, it's uh, always thrown me for a loop and I'm just trying to survive. I would love to know how many people have strapped in and stood on the gas in a top fuel dragster in the pitch dark. John Brown in Tucson, Arizona. I, I was not there, but I have heard this story. I, and you may know it, and you may be able to tell if it's true or not. I was told that they were told that with same story, we weren't going to take the light, turn the lights on. Yeah. Was John was a little younger. He told him to drag that shit to the starting line, and he ran that thing down through there in the pitch black. Yeah. And if I it would have left, I would have drove it to the finish line. You know? <laughs> I don't doubt that at all. <laughs> but that's like, that's what John Forrest sees in you because we all talk about him all the time. Like, we know it. You're around him all the time. But, I mean, he is an out of control legend, right? Like the guy's got balls of steel. He's got damn near no sense to do all the things he's been doing, but that's what makes him so cool. And even he told me when I was fangirling doing his shop tour, like he spoke so highly of your natural skill and just your, your brain and the way that it functions and why he's so invested into the future of John Force Racing and said your name like a thousand times. I don't care how close you are to him, how close you are to that family. Back up. Like, that's got to be pretty freaking sweet to know that he truly, truly believes in you and that. Yeah, no, it, it's wild. And uh, I, I'd say it's taken a while to get to that point. You know, it, it takes a long time to get his trust and, you know, his attention. And, um, you know, obviously he saw something in me at a young age, you know, calling me in 2017. Um, and you know, I've been working my tail off, but I, I really think the turning point was in 2021, uh, at the Dallas, uh, stampede of speed, we had a Wednesday test session and I was working on my dad's car in 2021 doing the superchargers. 
And uh, he called me into his lounge Wednesday morning. And I thought at any time you get called into his lounge, you're in trouble. You yeah, know? principal's office. And I'm like, oh, man, like what I do last night, what I do the night before, you know, I'm trying to, you know, trace back my steps. And he goes, hey, he's like, we're going to throw you in the funny car uh, today. You're going to make two rips in it. Keep your license current. And I'm like, oh, boy, like I'm in, you know. Am I prepared for this? Not really. You know, I got my bag of gear, but I still got a service of superchargers on my dad and Robert Heights car, but uh, I'm game for it. And he threw me in there. The first run absolutely annihilated the Christmas tree, blew him off at the hit, didn't blow nothing up, kept the panels in it and uh, drag it up there again. And we run 393 and thing looked like it was on railroad tracks. Uh, and after that, I think like the tides turn, like he's like, you know what, this, I hadn't drove a funny car since 2018 to that point. And uh, those are the only two runs I've had in a funny car up to Bradington. So in the last <laughs> six years, uh, I made one one smoke at the hit and 193. And uh, I think that's when the tides kind of turned and he, he really started to appreciate, you know, uh, what I may have to offer and really believe in me. And uh, man, it's awesome. I love working for the guy. He's He's unbelievable. I mean, he's He's in his 70s, and he's still competing at the highest level of motorsport and the quickest funny cars, you know, that have ever, ever been. You know, they're faster than they've ever been, and they're harder to drive than they've ever been, and uh, he still gets the job done, and I got a lot of respect for that. And one thing that I don't want to gloss over is everybody wants to – not everybody, but most people aspire to be race car drivers. I know I did, I did it since I was a kid. You know, I get asked all the time, how do you do it? Everybody listen to that 15 minute story leading up to getting into the funny car. That's what it takes. Everybody wants to wants to be the guy that shows up at the track and gets in there. Nobody wants to fold the towels, do the superchargers, do the bottom end, roll bearings, lay in oil, uh, go test when it's 90 degrees, drive the truck. And, and doing all that, you earn your spot. You earn it. Like it, it's not given to you. You earn it. And, and because of that, you understand the cars better. Like you know how they work. Uh, and, and that makes you a better, I believe it makes you a better driver. Yeah, you're hundred percent there, Stevie Fats. Uh, my dad told me when I first started racing, he said, the more you learn about the race car, the better race car driver you're going to be. And up until I was about 20 years old, 18, 20 years old, I thought he was crazy. I'm like, yeah, there ain't no way. I was like, one guy drives it. One guy works on it. You know, how, how, how is that going to help me? And, uh, I, I stuck true to his his theory and uh you know obviously listen to him and and man i'm glad i did because the more you do know about this car the better race car you're gonna or better race car driver you're gonna be you understand what's going on and uh it truly does help and and on the plus side you get a lot of respect from your team you know if you can yeah. be out there working on the race car that goes a long way and your team morale is huge in this motorsport you have to have a team that all gets along all respects each other and have that same vision of winning. And uh, I believe we have that right now. I say it all the time. Hard, uh, the paycheck, the, the dollars and cents, writing the check gets you 80%. Hard work gets you to 90 and team chemistry is the only way to get to hundred. Yep, yeah, absolutely. And it can't be faked. <laughs> it's like going to battle. You have to go to battle together to respect yeah. each other. It's hard. I like it. I like this guy. Yeah, it's the truth. <laughs> Stick it around, it'll it change. Yeah. <laughs> I've run cars for a lot of wealthy people, and yeah. and there's some of them been very successful, some of them not, and the difference is always team chemistry. Yep, hundred percent. I've lived off that ever since I started in '19. I've always tried to be a part of you know uh, who who's on the team, who we get to hire, who's going to mingle well, and then obviously you know keeping all that tightly knit throughout the year, and uh, yeah, it definitely goes a long way. Well, theoretically speaking. <clears throat> oh boy! Oh, here we go. About to get signed. About to get technical. Courtney, you can go. Make Stevie it. and I. Stevie and I don't know a fucking thing about a top fuel dragster. However, <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't go that far. I, we don't know much. Okay. This is a pro mod show. Austin's in a funny car. If that you let means me roll one and give me and Phil Schuler about thirty th minutes. I can make a lap. That but, means there's a dragster available. I, look, man. Bring I, a I'm, check. Bring a check. I'm just fucking saying. Stevie Fast, Lyle Barnett combo. <laughs> Boy, it'd be, fuck. It'd be like the Super Ninja show. Oh, yeah. dude. 
That thing like, may be that, that thing may be clapping when it comes up there. Don't end up in HR thing. at JFR. I'm just saying. Day. I'm just saying, Austin. Look, you know, you got you kind of got some pull now. <laughs> yeah, I'm well, just saying. I'm just all, saying. all I can say is if Force could fund ten of these things, he'd have them out there. I guarantee. So you would. yeah, that's all. It, that's all it comes down to is. Uh, I was having this conversation earlier with some people, and uh, you know, it, like I said, if Force could run ten of them and had the funding oh, yeah. to, he would all day long. So. Huh? That's really all it comes down to, and uh, to to put it in simple terms, forces the now best at it, and I believe naked. that thing's gonna run again. So, true story about John Force. So, Bobby Bennett's been wearing John Force about trying to get me in a car for ten years. Like he's been yep. telling, wearing him out, wearing him out, wearing him out. Well, Charlotte twenty twenty one is either twenty one or twenty two. John Force just showed we're changing a motor because I done blew it up. He comes into my trailer like at the worst possible time you ever want to tell somebody that like you want to drive their car. The whole car is blown to hell. Motor's hanging on a swing. We're in between rounds. And the greatest of all time is standing in there wanting to talk about funny cars. I told the guys, I was like, screw the next round. Get all this shit out of the way. We're Get out of the course. Yeah. Up there talk to John. So we go up there and we're, we're just bullshitting around a little bit. And I was like, dude, I want to drive a car for you so bad. He's like, all right. He's like, someday maybe we'll work on it. Well, I told him, I said, I'm going to win this race, and I'm going to remind you about it. So, miracle happens. We go win the race. I drive the car back from the winner circle and stop in front of you guys' trailers, and John's standing out there. I put the pro mod on the two-step in the pits, lost the <laughs> gas at him a couple times, trying to get his attention and drive back to the trailer. We take the engine apart before Dallas, and the thing's got a cracked piston in it. It was this close, this close to blowing up in front of John Forrest. <laughs> and all I could think about is would it have helped my chances or hurt them if it would have knocked the blower off? Yeah. <laughs> definitely, <laughs> helped. definitely helped. Definitely and helped. Definitely helped. was big time mad. Big oh, time. I'm sure. <laughs> like they were, I'm over there. Brrr, I mean, it was, it was, it was a bad situation. I got reprimanded. Recommended by technical department. Yeah. Um, I did. Yeah, I did that with Courtney in the car. One time. He did that with me in the car after we won Indy. We drove back, and I'm about to get out, and all of a sudden we hit the moon, and I'm like, "Cool, this is how I die, right here with Wally in my hands." It's fine. I had a drink, a Wally, and I was just sitting there, like, "All right." And we're on the two step in a turbo car. <laughs> a lot of people race cars for money. John Force is what I believe. Just what you said. If he had cubic ever money there'd be 75 funny cars and 75 Absolutely. directors with whoever he wanted to that was loud mouth and told the truth running yeah yeah that. he just loves the sport man like yeah. i mean that's what he built himself off of and he truly does have a passion for it that's unmatched yeah austin have really have you ever that. driven a pro mod no but i want to <gasps> we can trade. i happen to have a fleet of them out there <laughs> Well, it won't yeah. be an even deal. Like you'll get to make like seventy-five runs, and I make one or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're gonna have we to be able to dollars and cents. You, yeah, you already got a connection with Force. I'm sure we could work that out. Yeah. Oh my like, God, Stevie <laughs> just Stevie just got a little baby chub from that. No, it's not a baby one. It's, 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 <laughs> yeah, it's about to pick the desk arm. up off the ground. <laughs> oh, you hear? <laughs> so. Yeah. No, I I'd love to drive one. I I I'd be curious to uh know how the suspension feels. You know, and like. Everything I've drove, driven in drag racing, other than Frank Holly's cars, have been rigid chassis, and I'd like to, I'd like to give it a go for sure. Well, if you want to make a lap in a pro mod, I'll put you in one. I'll put you in one to save. Right. I'm game all day. Yes, sir. We will do oh it. my god, that would be so awesome. That would yeah. be so awesome. Austin Proc yeah. racing in next year's World Series of Pro Mod. Oh my god, come on. Yeah. Come on. on. Come so, on. I want to talk a little bit about because in well, it, it's like this across the board. <clears throat> But for the most part, in your top field dragsters and your funny cars, uh, reaction times are not quite as good as what we need. And you know, usually where we're at in the pro mods, right, or in the pro stock cars or anything like yeah. that. You know, if you guys are 30 or 40, you are knocking that son of a bitch down. You know, if we're 30 or 40, or at least Stevie and I, we're a little bit upset about it, right? Like we want to be yeah. up teen, 20. If you're double O, that's a really bad job at red lighting, but sometimes it helps. But for – you, um, you know, Justin Ashley, uh, from what I've saw and seen, Tony Stewart's done a great job. There are a couple of you that are very, very good. Um, and my, and I've sat in one, I drove an A fuel car. Um, and I guess kind of my question is how much of it is, is you 
right? And how much of it is mechanics in, in the way you set up, whether it's the the blades, it's your linkage, it's it's in the pedal, uh, it, it's the way that you're letting go of the brake. What of that is is you and what of that is set up? You know, I know with Erica in the, in the pro stock car, they changed the throw of the clutch lever, all these things. But like, there are a few of you that are good. Why? Yeah, I think anymore in fuel racing, everybody's pretty much got the same equipment. You know, NHRA's kind of tied our hands on innovating too much, you know, uh, yeah. trying to keep the speed down a little bit, trying to regulate it, not really keep it down, but make us work for it. And so I think everybody's got pretty similar stuff. Um, do cars react a little bit better than others? Maybe, but it's probably minuscule. Um, you know, it, 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 the, the snappier the engine is, I believe, the quicker your reaction time is going to be. And, and everybody's, like I said, pretty much got the same equipment and uh, they all react pretty close. Um, I think really what it comes down to is how hard you hit the pedal. Um, that physicality of trying to break the thing off the hinge. Uh, oh, wow, I think, you'd be great. I think, I think, I think <laughs> that that helps and it really just focus, you know, um, you really have to, you know, when you get good at something, time kind of slows down and yeah. you have to get to that point in your career where when, when that amber bulb flashes at you, it's almost in slow motion. It's not, it's not shocking you or surprising you. Um, you know, you're so honed in that it's kind of glowing up at you. And I believe that's what, you know, gets you a good reaction time. Um, but yeah, it's hard to say that that's how I think He's saying about it's it. mostly and, him. And, Phil, I don't, I mean, well, and that's I don't, fine. I, yeah, Phil Schuler really always know. tells me that the great drivers do not look at the Christmas tree and they do not look at the top amber bulb. They look at the pieces that make the bulb up. Right. Yeah. And we see a lot of times in every class when we get a new driver that comes in, they always generally start out exceptional on the tree. I, I've yeah. seen it more times than what I can count where we get a driver in, they're really great. Get the sophomore slump in by year three, they're struggling. But you and the, and the greats, great race car drivers, Lyle, uh, you guys always come to work. Um, I asked Frank Manzo one time. Uh, a question I said, Frank, you've been racing. This is when he was still racing alcohol funny car. I said, how are you so good so long? And like, how do you keep doing it? And he said, it's a job. And I treat it like a job. And I put in the effort to treat it like a job. And I've always tried to 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 to, to, to add that into my into my deal. But um, it's it's exciting watching you guys go up there and just get it. I mean, yeah, I'm like, a fan. I, I think that, you know, keeping a clear mind, like you, you mentioned new racers coming into the category and they're, they're good, you know, they're quick right off the bat. And I think some of that is they're, they're so naive to what's going on that you're just, you know, you're kind of in that mode where you're just trying to survive and you're just reacting. The longer you do something, the more you're analytical you're getting about it. And the more, you know, deep in thought you're getting about it. And those are the two worst things for reaction times if you're going up there staging thinking about cutting a good light or thinking about what's going on you're already 200 slight in my opinion so it's just really clearing your mind and um i feel like i've had that little bit of slump you know uh in the past years um you know trying to overthink the process and you just you just can't point it simple and uh i'm trying to work myself away from that and it's been going good right now but I'm also new in another category, so there's no telling, but uh, I definitely give it my all every time, whether it's qualifying, testing, I'm always up there to chop the tree down and, and I want to be quick. So uh, I think that mentality will keep you going strong. Oh, and they know it. Old prop rocket. <laughs> all right. I got a question and then I know we're, we're, we're running long. Uh, do you have a championship caliber team? Can you go race for a championship this year? Uh, definitely. You know, th this this team's been together the last two years. They've run uh, second both years and, and had a run at winning the championship. Uh, definitely had a caliber car of doing it. And literally, like, last year, it just wasn't meant to be. Like, th this car where it spun that far down in Pomona in the left lane, was it, so just, crazy. It, it, it just wasn't meant to be. There's no reason it should have spun that far down there. You know, it's one of those was, runs that you would drag, I, and I've done this as crew chief a thousand times. You yeah. would drag that right back up there, and it goes down the racetrack. Like you yeah, know, sure. that it doesn't need anything. 
It yeah. just you. I, I tell my guys, you could breathe on it, and, and yeah. it would have went down the racetrack. Yeah, well, and it, it's like last weekend in Gainesville, our our race car it threw up early, and literally it was the drive shaft was painted over each other from the run we were trying to make Q1. We were trying to go 86. It was painted over it and it just come loose, like for no reason, you know? And it's just one of those deals where you chalk up and you go, man, it wasn't our day, you know? And that was, it was the, that was the Scott Coletta double yes, up day. And, you weren't and, getting in the way. And, and <laughs> I, I'm so happy for them. You know, I was frustrated at first, but after I heard everything that went on that week and then they double up, never doubled up in their whole career, which is you crazy, know, Coletta right? Motorsport, like a lot of respect to that team, a lot of respect yeah. to Connie Coletta. And, uh, you know, that was cool for them. And it was their day, and I'm happy for them, you know. Would we like to roll out of there with a win? Hell yeah. But we still had an outstanding weekend. And, uh, yeah, you can't you can't be mad at that. Well, if, if one thing's for sure, yeah, I agree. To see you win the Gators, your first race in the funny car would have been cool. But I – <clears throat> moving forward, I will run out of proc picks and Eddie Fishel's pick the pros yeah. here soon. And it will not be the last time we see you in a final. And I guarantee you. Did you pick uh, him? At that race? Yeah. I don't think we picked. Uh, yeah, nah. No, no. For in um, pick the pros and Eddie Fishel. I pick think pro. I did. Yeah. Because I think yeah. he may have been the only reason I scored a point. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Austin. <laughs> Thanks for could, have scored, could have scored yeah. me a couple more there, dickhead. Yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> I was he was trying my best. Um, we do have, so I know you've never watched this show. It's fine. We'll talk about it later. Um, I'm just kidding. Uh, we have this thing and we ask every guest this and you Austin, listen, I, I'm no, going to shut I'm, the fuck up. No, <laughs> no, no. Your opinion matters the most because you are a chef. You are culinary arts trained. You have a palate. Oh, you have this an is eye gonna, for expertise. This is going to crash yeah. and fucking burn for me. What do you think of fajitas? She's greasing the restaurant. deal. She's like greasing fajitas? the whole deal. Do, I, do I like fajitas? Yes. I, I do like fajitas. But oh, here it comes. But women do not like fajitas because it makes their hair stink. And that's what I know about fajitas. <laughs> that is true. That is true. That is true. But like, so we I want to ask you this now too. Neither do I, real men that have a fucking beard. Well, you yeah, have hair yeah. on your face and he led that in perfect. That's beautiful. But so Mr. <laughs> Mr. Culinary Trained Guy, how do they make it sizzle like that? Like, is it real or do they all put the like a little bit of water on there to make it steam before they come out? Is it really just about presentation? Um I think fajitas, the point of fajitas is the presentation. Right. Uh, it's a really hot pan. They probably cook it in something else, and then they get a pan scorching hot in the oven at like 500. They throw it in there, and they either throw a little water on it or oil to make it smoke. I think it's oil because the way it sticks to you and your clothing. <laughs> your skin. Yeah, it, it's got to be. It's got to be oil. They got to drizzle some, like, vegetable oil in there or something. Pastoral. And yeah, and it's it's yeah, it's all about the show. There you go. Lyle, Lyle, Lyle my girls won't it's, smell it's like he does. Presentation. Sometimes winning the race is not good enough. You have to be your or showman. Exactly. It yeah, it's all like, about the show. No, it's if you're not going to win show. the race, you're going to run like shit. Then you got to show off. And right? forevermore, you got to awesome. pull your pants down, show your butt cheek, <laughs> pull so, your butt cheek to part like Mike Hunt. Forevermore, Lyle has Lyle was as some sort of in grained fajita trauma from his childhood that has caused his whole view of fajitas to be skewed in his life. So he's, is it, we're, we're, you know what? It, it's just hurt. like being at the drag illustrated party at Indy and, and the, those the oh, Hooters yeah. girls bring your bottle of liquor with sparklers and bullshit. No, it's still just a bottle of fucking liquor. Well, they charge eight hundred dollars for a yeah, I don't yeah, yeah, yeah. Just bring the son of a bitch to me. I don't <laughs> need the plate to sizzle when you bring it to the table. Just this set the shit down on a good. white. Here I, I don't care. Put it on a paper plate. This is why we can't get spot. Does it fucking need to sizzle? That's it. That's it. It's, it's, but Austin it's Brock, pathetic. Austin Brock forever changed the game because we know the real reason now. You don't want your face hair to stink there. Yeah. Oh, and that, and that, that's yeah. fine. Nobody wants to leave there. Smell like a Mexican's butthole. <laughs> I love it every time you say Mexican ball. Oh, I love it. Oh, Man, this has been good. I'm so glad you came on. Sometimes I'll use the phrase Mexican butthole when we're having a team meeting, and I'll just work it in where it's not a good spot for it, and everybody laughs every time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is there ever a good oh, spot man. for it? I, I think it's good anytime. 
I think you can just yeah. bring it out. It's like a it's like a good scotch. It, it's just yeah. good it's like natural light. Yeah. Well, sorry, Lyle. <laughs> Damn, we just yeah, that, the whole thing off the rails. We're yeah, it's just that that's disappointing. We're winning know? the pro race three against one. That was a big uh, Austin Prox. He always fan. is. He acts like it's like this close tally. Like no one's agreed with him. Who's he's got with? one guy ever and he tricked him. Like he dated <laughs> the deal in there. Was it Scotty Cannon that agreed yeah, with him? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, because, that counts as like seven. Scotty Cannon's a fucking legend and okay. he understands. Okay. okay. Anyway, I'm so sorry. Hey, Lyle, well, this is a good idea. We're going to, I'm going to send Mission Foods a proposal for you and see if they can like turn the tide. It could be like the, you know, Chick fil A's got a cow as a mascot. I like, I like uh, soft tacos. He can have somebody that hates fajitas as a mascot. Nobody said you couldn't put peanut butter and jelly in a tortilla dick. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay. Well. Austin Brock, you got anything you want to say? You got anybody you need to plug? You got any news that you want to that you want to bust loose? You got yeah, I drive funny cars and I ain't fucking fajitas. Yeah. <laughs> Lyle's got it. No, uh, we're gonna I'm a fajita eating funny car driver. <laughs> At hey, in Phoenix, it's gonna say I'm I Austin Brock and I eat fajitas. Yeah, I didn't say I eat them, I just said I liked them. Right. I don't mind them. I don't hate them. I don't hate them, Lyle. You can love. You can love them. You can love them. We'll have us a big old mess of fajitas in Phoenix. It'll be good. Yeah. Look. Well, let's have them in Pomona. Are you guys going to be in Pomona? No. no but when, I, but when you and I double up and win Phoenix, you All know right. what? If I if I win Phoenix, I'll eat fajitas with Austin Brown. I will. Do they ever? Bring... It, I I might sound like a novice right now, but do they run? Do they ever run uh, pro mods in Pomona? We have not yet because uh, a, I don't think you guys would want to go to Pomona. I don't think we, we could stop as bumpy as it is. I think yeah. we would crash a lot of cars. Yeah, I don't think you would even want to leave the starting line as bumpy as it is. Yeah. But when I watch all you guys bouncing around and yeah. Arr, 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 yeah. like they, uh, they've asked us, NHRA's asked us many times, and we've all unanimously voted to, that we think we would lose half the yeah. field. I, I think that's a very smart decision. <laughs> I'd give it I'd give it a good college try, I can tell you that. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, we'd all like to try, but I ain't worried about you guys. I'll watch you do it. I don't want to drive a yeah. pro mile car a quarter mile. And and you would do it in a fucking heartbeat. Yes, I wouldn't. I just it just wouldn't be my first choice. I I would talk yeah. enough shit on the way up there. You'd do it. Mm. I feel like I'm running a daycare. You are. Maybe you are. He's only like, acting mature because awesome. you're on here. In about five minutes, she's going to be cussing me out and raising hell and talking shit about Lyle's beard. And I, I like Austin to think I'm respectful, you know? He knows the truth. He does know the truth. <laughs> we buddies. <laughs> awesome. Well, thanks for coming on, Austin. Yeah. I know we went longer than yeah, I thanks, told you, but I hope you had fun. And welcome to the Shake and Bake family. You can never get out. Yep. yep. Thank once you guys once for you're having in, me. You're in. Thank you for taking the time to All hang right. out with us. And uh, I'll be staring at my phone for that phone call. So like, just, just know that I'm, I'm ready Indian style when that thing comes through. All right. Sounds good. If I win Pomona, you guys got to have me back on. All right. We'll deal. Do it. Deal. That's deal. A deal. Go kick their ass and we'll be watching brother. All right. Good luck, Sounds dude. Good. Yep. Good luck. Hey, buddy. Thanks for having me. Nice yeah, talking man. to you guys. Peace out. See Austin. See Austin. What an awesome guest. Awesome. What a fine Damn. young gentleman. He is so I good can't. for the sport. That the whole making a rip in the in the fuel car for the first time in the dark, like I that bring. That. I think Steve, you were there when uh when old Mark Mickey drug that thing up there at Holly Springs in the middle of the night. Oh yeah, oh, that's yes. the first thing I thought about. Yep, yep, and, and and it's amazing how when you get the behind. See that that shit right there is what makes me love our sport. Absolutely, like, the only crazy son of a bitch out there. Like people that are great at it, they all are crazy like I am. But like, also, like, why have we never heard? Why have we never heard that story? We're supposed they, to be storytellers. Like, it takes a show like ours to bring that out. Because there's tired powers that be that don't want people knowing that people are driving a twelve thousand horsepower yeah, funny car. Damn, but that's what's fucking or cool. they did a national event and ran it to the finish line for the first time in Q one. Like, <laughs> that's badass. That yeah. is really cool. That honestly, I thought he was cool before that, but that he's pretty cool now. Yeah, that's fucking unbelievable. <laughs> My I first pro mod run to the finish line was in Q1 at the Gator Nationals in 2017. I ran it about 1,200 feet, but I couldn't get it there because, like, you, while you know, when you first started running quarter mile, it takes you a while to get it there. Like, you think you're there and you're not. And I kept thinking I was there and I was early, uh, shutting off, and my first rip was there. 584 at 2. 
my first my first full quarter mile run in a pro mod is the fastest I've ever been. Shut up. In a pro mod to the quarter mile at five sixty seven at two fifty three and some change, I think. And that is the fastest I've ever since I've never, I went 68 the next run, and I've never been a 60 since then. I've been 70 flat. That's I've never been a 60. That's a pretty crazy stat. Yeah, when I when I showed up to Bradenton to test, I'd signed the deal with Elite in November. Uh, me, Justin Elks, Ben Stoss, and Mike Earl went to Bradenton in December at some point for a private test. I had never sat in a pro mod, and I went like. Uh, 970 or 980. I'd never been sub one second of the 60. My first run, it went like 970. <laughs> went, I'd been 398 or something like that to the eighth. I went freaking 371 or something like that. My first rip to the eighth. Uh, and then my first full run of the quarter, I went 567, 254 or something like that. And that was like the fifth run in a pro mod ever. ever. Y'all are crazy. Yes, we are. If you drive a pro mod, you, are, you have something wrong with you. For sure, are. and I adore a lot of you idiots. Um, I got this question a bunch, so I'll address it here. Uh, I, I did not uh, plan to race the Gator Nationals, nor did I enter. Um, so I had a lot of fans ask me where we're at and why didn't they see us, our car, see me on the sheet. I didn't enter the Gator Nationals. I had no intention of coming. I was there uh, working on Sydney Frigo's car. We had a tough weekend, tough opening weekend, and DNQ'd. Our last qualifying session got rained out. Uh, but I did not plan to enter the Gators. I have a NHRA spec pro mod that I constructed, but it is not done yet. And I may actually sell it before I get it done, um, just because I have another one that we're working on already. But uh, I may, you may see me in, a, in NHRA some a little later in the season when we get our Art of Vanco car uh, running like it should, but um, I'm not entered as of yet. So we talk a little World Series Pro Mod? Yep. Yes. Because I know you got How the about to make $20 on that shit. That son of a bitch ran good. Woo wee. That's a badass hot rod. I the driver let us down. But yeah, what happened, buddy? Well, first of all, let's talk about the running good. I legitimately went into that race and I told this to Lyle. If I could qualify. It was a win. That thing never made a pass on big tires or had big tires on it until we got to the World Series of Pro Mod. And that is a true story. We changed it over in the parking lot at SGMP before we drove there. And when we unloaded it, it spun the first time, uh, the first run and never aborted another run until E1. Um, that is a – I'm super proud of Tommy Mooney race cars. And I'm super proud of Ryan and RK of how they did uh, the fit and finish work on this thing. And the shadow is a badass hot run. It, it definitely was fun to watch. I got to be Lyle that weekend with our little sign. That was fun. Lyle, I could not kick as high as you. I was holding the sign for him and I got Lyle's name on my wrist. I'm a supporting bitch. Let me tell you what. <laughs> um, it was, we, we ended up qualifying third or fourth. Uh, and we ended up going all the way to the semis uh, in our first outing on big tires against 60 something of the baddest jokers in the world. And uh, it was it, it, that, that's a tough race. It's a, not only a tough race to win. It's a tough it's race. Tough to to tune. It's tough to qualify. It's tough to tune and drive the car. Uh, I'm proud of my guys, um, and and it was a it was a kick ass deal. Uh, Matt, you got any World Series of Pro Mod footage? From the shadow. I do. Give me one second. So how about this E1 run up against Scott Wildgust? If you'll watch it, nobody, everybody argued with me and said I didn't slap the gas at five tenths. But I had to pedal that thing twice in E1. E1 was the first day that it got hot. I think a lot of people weren't ready to pedal. Yeah. Um, and there was a lot of people that didn't try. I had to pedal my way through the first two or three rounds. <laughs> to get there. Oh, yeah. You, 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 feathered, you feathered that thing early. It, it was shaking. It, it was loose, and you can feel it. Like, if you're – while I consider you an elite race car driver, you can feel it, 
And I, I don't get, I don't think twice about it. If I know it's coming loose and I know what I'm trying to do to it because I tune it to, uh, you got to be tender footed on them things. Yeah. And we had a good outing. Uh, we, we, going back to why we sucked, I just flinched. I was 007 the round before. I was hyper focused on staging the car shallow because I was scared to death of going red. Flickered the top bulb, froze and turned loose, and it happens. It happens. It sucked. I'm sorry to let my team down. What about you, Lyle? Tell us about your World Series of Pro. Oh, well, uh, we, we qualified. Um, we Coming off the Snowbirds in the U.S. streets, the car, it was just all but perfect. Um, between the two races, we had the, uh, the NHRA updates done, and I'm not saying any of that caused anything. Like, no, none of the work anybody did, but the car came apart to have the NHRA updates done. It went back together, and we just struggled to find it. Um, we got in the show. Uh, I go to the I go to the chip draw. I'm standing beside Spencer Hyde, and I'm like, you know who I'm drawing, right? He's like, who? I said, Mark Mickey. He's like, oh, no, nah, man, you're not drawing Mark Mickey. I, I knew it. I knew walking up there. I said, there's absolutely no way I leave this chip draw – and I do not draw Mark Mickey. Wasn't it chip number one? It was chip number one, and I drew Mark Mickey. And I and knew Halsey it. was chip number two, or whoever was number two ended up being chip number two. That was, yeah. we, y'all started grabbing him. And we were like, "Oh shit, what's happening?" Yeah. yeah, but I knew it. I knew that's who I was going to draw. Um, I'd beat him on a whole shot uh, in the semis or the quarterfinals of the Snowbirds. Like, no, in the semifinals to go to the final of the made up Snowbirds, which was at the U.S. Streets. So he owed me one anyway. Um, of course, you know, we go up there for E1 and he's low by like three hundreds, goes 64. It's hotter than 40 hills and he goes up there and just boop. And I gave mine up. I would call it a five out of 10 pedal job just because I was hoping it would just make it and it didn't. Yeah. But, um, you know, we had a rough go there. We had a rough go at the Gators um, in the good session. Um, we had a we we broke the end of a, it dropped a valve uh nobody knows why they hadn't seen one drop a valve in a while like that uh so i lost the good session uh we had to kind of back up and punt for q3 uh got in the show in the 13 spot um and then like stevie said it canceled q4 so i was in there um mason wright and the elite modern crew uh is who i had first round they made a really nice that car is running really well they made a really nice run in e1 and got me by a little bit um, but you know, it's part of it, dude. We're going to go to Phoenix, uh, regroup, reset, and, uh, try to get her did. Gators were freaking awesome though. There was a gazillion people there. I mean, I don't mean this in any kind of way, but even for pro stock, pro stock bike for pro mod, for all of the sportsman classes, like, I don't know where they come from in Florida, but there have been races oversaturated that demographic lately and they keep freaking showing up the fans in florida last month fucking unbelievable unbelievable no race hurt the other race right before we get past world series of pro mod a couple of things number one shout out to sportsmanship in the final yeah. oh so um, cool so if you guys watched uh jim halsey nitrous cars are hard to run at this level you ding them up a lot uh they dinged it up had to put a rack in it Derek ward waited on halsey to fix it they drag both cars around the corner to crank it up. Derek Ward's starter solenoid falls off and would not crank. Halsey and uh, Brandon Schweitzer haul it back to the pits and wait for him to put a starter on. Uh, classy move. Classy move. Uh, I, I think most of the competitors that we have, not all of them, but most of them would wait and do that. Uh, there's some, a couple of people that would did, 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 fire that thing up. Who would, who would want to win $100,000 for a one race a year then? <laughs> <laughs> there are people in against our no one that. like the most blue balls of of ending you can ever have yeah they're it, they're, out they're out there they're out there, there. Well, well, I hope they, they are make it. they are among us they are you're right but uh shout out sportsmanship it cost halsey uh the win doing that but huge congrats to Derek ward that team has been running up front for a long time they've deserved a win for a long time I've, I've called that they were going to win for a long time, and it's good to see them guys uh, get that. U.S. Street, then, he had a really good weekend at U.S. Street, and I told the story on air, but we talked like finals were going at U.S. Street, and he was bummed. He's like, man, I really thought this was our weekend because they've never had a big 
breakout. And I told him like, man, it's coming. It'll come. And in the winter circle, he was like, this is even better. Just those moments. I know I don't get to go fast and stomp on that loud pedal. I see clay in there. What up clay? But my okay. view of what I get to witness the different side and the different view that I have of, for what I do and how I absorb the sport top tier. Like it's, it's just so cool to watch these guys have those big moments. I'm so proud of Derek. So and cool. I, I got to know Derek over the past couple of years, you know, and like, I'm not saying he doesn't have nice stuff, but he's not like one of these big mega teams, right? No, like, he's but that's got who own, wins World Series. Got, a, lot. got his own business, you know. Got some pretty decent stuff. Got an older car, um, and the dude's good. He's a great driver, um, and they've got. I mean, they they had their shit together and ran and that really crew well. and family. They were so pumped. It's so cool. Not they that I didn't be. want Halsey to to win or anything, but like you look up above when they had the pictures of all the previous winners, like. Those aren't Jim Halsey's. They're not like, you know, it's it's the grit that wins those one-off races. And I love that about it. And speaking of, I see it in the comments here. Um, PDRA, where actually Tyler Crossnow is going to have a little grudge race between Spencer and Derek for the last qualifier on uh, Friday night for like kind of King of the Kings kind of deal. So I did see that in there, Wyatt. Thanks for setting that up. And that'll be cool. All right, I have to run. I'm going to leave you guys with it. But before I go, I've got a cup. So I have to go get the shadow done and loaded to leave for Alabama in the morning. Uh, I'm going to leave you two guys with it. I want y'all. Well, let's just now. Let's just wrap her up because I need to go. Oh, I got to go. Yeah, we got to talk about a couple things. Man. We're going to wrap it up quick. We got to talk about a couple things. One, I don't know what this is about, but Annette Summer had a new has a new fan page, and there's some monster news that is coming through it soon. Don't know what it is. But I was told to mention it, and I listened. You don't know what it is? No. I mean, all, I I know is that, all I know is that she does not did not hit the lottery, and I'm not going top fuel racing next week. That's the Damn only it. thing. No, it's not. Okay. okay. Number two, we got to talk about Gainesville. We got to talk about Haney's race. Okay. We got to talk about what the Outlaw Pro Mod Rules Committee is going to do to slow down the turbo combination. There's a lot. We might have to go next week. Mm. Yeah, we're going to push that. Wow, what do you think of your turbo? You race turbos. You won U.S. Nationals in a turbo. Um, do to make well, ahead. there's there's like a couple options. One, you cannot put enough weight on them for them to stay within the SFI rules and regulations in regards to weight of a pro modified car to to maintain SFI cert. You have right? to take like, a thousand horsepower away. You, you cannot. You cannot add enough weight. Um. I don't understand, and and we've had Mark Mickey on here. He was a great guest. I do not understand why they will let them make as much power as they want and try to slow it down with weight, but they take a screw blower. They can smash that bitch. If they'll take the gloves off of us and make us make 3,400 horsepower. Right. I don't understand that. Why is it okay for them to make all the power and control? I would love to weigh what they weigh and have 128 over and let's go race. But I, I don't understand why one is okay especially when there's only a couple of them and they can take that turbo away and they can just spend some money and make it fair. But all of the screw cars would love to add, just add 150 pounds and make, give me 400 more horsepower, but right. that's not okay. I don't understand. I've never. I mean, understood. So I, I think they, you either spec a turbo, um, you know, and there's all kinds of talk about what that is. Is it a 76? Is it an 80? Is it an 88? Is, it is it a smooth bore 88? You know, all these turbos now are, they have an 88 millimeter or a 98 millimeter, inlet but it's got these surge slots and all these things you know it's got a clipped wheel where it's 88 millimeter uh right where it comes into the into the hole but it goes out big to a whatever um i think spec turbo is an option a boost limit um you know if you but th then there's all this tech involved right you know if, if you're going to do a boost limit that's downloading data every run and somebody to check and make sure that that's accurate and so it, it kind of becomes a tech nightmare. I think if you spec a turbo, um, maybe that's the way to fix it. I heard, you know, though I've talked to people about this. Somebody mentioned maybe you limit them to a 16-inch wide tire, you know, or a 16-inch wide wheel. Um, we can all run 18s. Would that do anything? Maybe, you know, if, if you make all turbo cars run a 16-inch wide wheel. I don't, I don't know, man. I mean, you, you can't just keep adding weight to them. So the only way to – Therefore, to do that is to limit them power-wise. Uh, that's either like every, other, like every other combination is limited. Every other combination is limited on power, except for nitrous. They make what they can. Yeah. But like, 
We're all limited on power and overdrive, except for that. I, I don't understand it. I don't know. I think it's like some Star Trek conspiracy. But shit. I mean, you know, and <laughs> and everybody was was excited, you know. And I think rules committee, uh, tech, and everybody included when Mark Mickey didn't win the World Series of Pro Mod. Yeah. Well, we were excited um, when when he went out there in a good session and slowed down four hundred. So they're like, "Oh, right. see, it's, it's right." And, and that thing I was just not. Gonna... If you watch those that car make runs, it is nowhere near its potential. It yeah. is too smooth. And they're making great runs. I'm not saying they're not making great no, runs. No, no, they're – But when you fantastic. see a car that looks like Derek Ward's and looks like Lyle Barnett's and looks like Stevie Fast and looks like Todd Tuttero, that thing's on the ragged edge. Every run is twitching. It's all over the racetrack. That's because it's as fast as it'll go. That's because it's on its, its, at its maximum. When you see them never touch the wheel and it idles down the racetrack, it, it, it's not – it, and it's fucking not. hard to drive. <laughs> right, that's what I'm saying. Like, we have missed runs because we're all over the racetrack. I don't know. Uh, Project Ronnie updates have not touched it. I have been on the road for the last six weeks. Uh, we are working on it, but it is coming slow. The new shop is eating my ass up, and I mean that on, on absolute truth. Uh, new shop was supposed to be done in June, then October, guaranteed January 1st. Promise we're moving in in February and March. We're definitely going to have a CO, and uh, it's, it's really taking a lot of my time, effort, and resources. So uh, everything that doesn't concern uh, immediate racing, and getting our new shop done is on the back burner. Um, you want to talk real quick, Halsey's race and uh, Haney's race, a lot of big money stuff coming down the pipeline. Yeah, a lot of big money stuff. I don't agree with the timing, putting it on top of Charlotte too. I don't understand why that's happening there. I don't ever like racers. It's the same weekend as Charlotte. Uh, Haney's races, the SmackDown is the uh, same week as Charlotte too. And because I don't that was already a Midwest race. Right. And I'm not talking bad, bad about them. I'm just, I struggle with anything that, that divides the field. Yeah. Right. We want to see for that kind of money. We want to see all the baddest people there. Right. That's a 150 grand. I think they're paying all the way down to semis, 1250 in the semis or something. I right. think that's the difference. It is cool. Yeah, I, that's, like that. that's like, cool. I like that. I wish we Do you could. think this is where it's all going. Like Wes was kind of, you know, it's come and gone, but, there's so many different pro mods in the country now that I think there's, there's space for all of this stuff. I mean, well, what is, what is happening in what Wes did is everyone realized that they can get the racer to put up all the payout. Right. And, <laughs> I'm serious. I'm not talking bad about them. It, and that's the direction that it's going. So like you get big entry fees and then you pay big money and it's, it's a big race. And that's, that's kind of the trend uh, now. And that's not just pro mod racing. That's door car racing in general. Right. Um, but I think that that is the trend that is going, you know, I like it. I get excited for it. I, I think it's cool. I agree with you. I don't like the, um, the double ups, but Halsey's in early May. Um, that's at an NHRA divisional. They're having a divisional at Cecil County. So they'll have alcohol stuff there. I mean, all the way down to juniors, everything. So that should be, that should be pretty exciting as well. And I think Halsey's got the right brain to put on a really organized race. He ain't going to have no hoopla. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There's going to be no hoopla. <laughs> Amy could not win his own money if he was racing himself. I have to read. This is random, but I have to read this. Before. Did y'all? So we, uh, Haney called me out before I got big tires on my car. I sh the internet is everybody's internet broke. That was talking shit about the shadow three weeks ago. Is oh, it every, is now. Is everybody hundred percent. Everybody's service. Like Lyle. Like Lyle's. Is everybody's service down? Because. Three weeks ago, <laughs> even so I mean, people that were not even relevant in pro mod like Keith Haney were calling me out, and I, damn, it's quiet. Who wants to sit next to that shadow and steal this weekend on drag radials? I guarantee you, not a lot of folks think that's a good idea. Nope. You see, I used you for the old thumbnail on the flow deal today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I do want to read this real quick before we go to um, Hannah, one of my favorite little junior racers. She's in the junior, the double shit show junior mafia. She sent me a message and said, just got a runner up, got the win in the semis, had no brakes on a short shutdown, had to tip it over in the grass, bad for carbon wing, tried to make the finals, but lost brakes again when I rolled through the box. Shake and bake. Rock and roll. Next generation shake and baker right there. I had to tip her over on the wing now. Isn't there. that awesome? She's That's a cool, cool ass chick. I love it. I see a lot of people dog out junior racing a lot. Junior racers are the future of the sport. No, and that at Gainesville, they did a really good job of it. They included them at the right times. They didn't push them. They followed us. They ran right before, right after the finals. 
followed us back down the return road after we won and the, the fans were going crazy. Those kids and those parents, I love junior kids and parents all over the country, but those D2 kids have some really awesome supportive parents and, and they, they definitely had it together. Kudos to the division two director who set all that up. That was sick. Um, I do run Holly EFI. Uh, I support it and run it with customers cars, but we run at KTR. We're a business and we run, we can run any fuel injection that you have. So uh, when Holly um, became more private equity, there's some staff folks there that, that left. Um, I'm still good friends with everybody that works there. We still have customers that run Holly EFI. We support it. We sell it. We stock it. Um, and, That's and a shirt. Right. Huh? That's a cool shirt slogan. We there support it. We sell it. We stock it. Yeah, we do. Uh, but as a business model, KTR is a growing company and we support and our dealers for most any EFI manufacturer. There's your politically correct answer. Yeah, no shit. Cool. I guess Lyle's gone, huh? Yeah, we started talking about grudge racing. Damn, Tidwell must have <laughs> Tidwell must have unplugged the Starlink over there because he knew I was talking about him. Oh, that's awesome. Well, good luck this weekend, Stevie. I'll be watching. I'm working the race from home this week or from Pomona this weekend. Oh, yes, yeah. be good. I'm excited about this deal. And uh there's man, I wish we had more time. We need to talk about the flow race trailer catching on fire. We gotta talk about Gainesville. We gotta talk about uh who won <laughs> Gainesville? Jose won Gainesville. Uh yes. Yes, uh, stellar showing for that team. They ran good. Steve Pay did a great job. Um, it's I'm I'm always impressed by Jose how he comes into the race and and it's like he never was not there. You know, he's just he's a great driver. Clay said Lyle had fajitas delivered. That's probably true. He was embarrassed. Probably he probably didn't want y'all to to open the door. You yeah. guys would think it's the pizza delivery guy and just steaming smoke. smoke everywhere. Yeah. Um, we, we can, I wasn't really going to talk about the, um, flow deal. It was so, I'll just make my little statement and flows back to me. Say what you want to say. I'm the one who has to deal with the public. Some of the most unfortunate turn of events back to back that I've ever seen. Um, y'all don't understand. I know I preach it cause I work there, but the shit is hard. We are making changes. We've come a long way, but shit's going to happen. And we had some electrical issues made it the best call we could make and letting Jay, thank God he did it. Um, handle that while we got it back up and running, but really appreciate all your kind fucking messages I've been getting over the last few weeks. I mean, it was really great. I know I put that whole trailer together, but y'all cannot even begin to imagine from the time we knew we had an issue till the next day, even after we got it back up, those guys in the trailer, Tom and Eric and everybody, I've never seen people work so hard and be more distraught by what happened than them and me having to make that call. Like you think that this is just, we take your money and we put on a shit show. You cannot believe the heart and soul that goes into it. So I get it. We hear you all the things, but man, we're trying to so, shit shit hard. Stop if you guys up. watched the race one from Sao Paulo. Uh, if you guys are ever, uh, most of the time I post a link, uh, but if you've ever watched the broadcast, uh, go to hot 402s YouTube channel. And they put on it, – it's it's Norm, and he puts on a broadcast of the race. It's phenomenal. Um, and it's it's a free deal. He's got drones. Uh, it's it's I, I watch behind the scenes what all has to go in to make it happen. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's, and it, one it's, little thing goes wrong or a power, you're plugged into the tower. It's just there's no excuses, and we took it on the chin. I literally had to get up in the announcer booth and take it on the chin. But uh, – but I'm here for the community and we weren't going to let the race not be seen. And NC ProMotor came. I was worried Flo was going to be like, you know, that's the wrong call. That's another live streaming company. Dude, they backed me. I learned a lot about the people who employ me by what happened at that race. And that's the positive that I took from it. So just hang with us, guys. We've got a lot of shit coming. <laughs> I'm excited about this season. It's already starting off hot. KTR is two for three so far this year. Going to be good, Stevie. It's going to be good. We got Alabama this week. Phoenix coming up directly after. Woo! Phoenix is going to be good. Pro Mods in Phoenix. Everybody's I'm asking. I'm going to be in Phoenix. I'm going to be at PDRA Galat is uh, the the same week of Phoenix. So so when are we going to do the next show? Um, we're so going to talk we a lot about that. We've, we're kind of off one now, but I guess it doesn't matter. The next Tuesday would be the sh So we either are Tuesdaying it in one week. Or it will be the Tuesday of Phoenix. So we'll talk about it. We'll let y'all know. We'll let you guys know. 
Cool. Well, thanks for watching. I'm super glad. Austin Prox sent a message too and said that he had a lot of fun. It was different than normal podcasts. So that's good. Yeah, that was uh, that was fun having it. When you got the real deal on the show, you can tell you. It's like when Scotty was on here, when these other greats are on here. You got the real deal. And that yep. was nice. Um, all right. Well, thank you guys for watching. Uh, this is a little bit short, but longer than I plan to be here. I'm going to get the Shadow 3.0 ready to finish Jeffrey Barker, finish getting it ready uh, for steel alabama and uh if you got a radial tire car you're coming to get crushed you're coming to race for a second you heard it here roll that beautiful bean footage shake it back <laughs>